Well, Matthew Reese, uh, before we really get started here, I want to congratulate you, first of all, Critics' Choice TV Award nomination and a TV Critics Association nomination just in the past week or so. Uh, what was your reaction to getting both of those? I'm glad all that money that we blackmailed them was put to good use. <laughs> you can't blackmail those critics. They, they love to rail against the system. No, I, actually that's a lie. Extortion is what gets you nominations. Um, especially with the Critics' Choice, not only you, but Carrie gets in, Annette gets in, the show's up for drama series. That must be a real thrill for, for all of you together to be, to be uh, rewarded like that. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, the greatest testament, I think, is, is to the to the writers and the writing. You know, where as we all know, it all it all stems from. Um, but it, it's a, it is certainly is a collective effort. Um, and you know, I know sometimes in our industry we we take a hit for bemoaning how difficult it is. But those who do it will know. You know, it's it's not it's not an easy task. So um, it's good that the whole team gets a, a you know. It's, it's testament to the whole team, and that's good that they get recognition. You know, especially right now, the last three or four years on television have been the best years ever, at least for drama. Drama right now is just unbelievably good, so when you can be singled out out of that company, it's, that's, that's just terrific. Absolutely. absolutely. As you say, you know, it, uh, television is and has been in a golden age for, for some time now, so, you know, to be... To be recognised within um, an incredibly competitive pack, um, it's um, you know it, it it makes it that much better. Well, let's let's talk about this second season. And by the way, if somebody's watching and you haven't seen the second season, you might want to go away for a little while and, and come back uh, later because we got to talk about it. Um, what was your reaction to the basic overall arc for this particular season? Um, I love the fact that. It was in complete contrast to the first season, whereby you saw Philip and Elizabeth Jennings in the first season um, find wind their way through a very difficult um, and rocky path on this, you know, on this journey towards some kind of um, meeting place as a relationship, um, and then in the unity that was the second season, um, what was interesting was then the sort of the the greater challenges that were thrown at them that they had to, to, to face as a, as, a, as a team, as a couple, um, and how that, to a degree, solidified the relationship, but, you know, not without its um, conflict. Well, I like the fact that, that I mean, there were so, there was, you were split up at the end of the previous season, and I like the fact that they didn't drag that out at the beginning of this season. They got you right back together, even though you both admit that you've still got differences. Absolutely, you know, and that's what certainly keeps a, um, you know a very interesting element alive in the show. Is that you know, as in any relationship or any sort of dramaturgical or dramatic um, relationship, there you know there is great conflict within it, which makes it inter interesting. But also, you know, that's true for any relationship or marriage and in life. But uh, you know, it keeps uh, keeps the sparks flying. We've got questions coming in from our chat room too, and occasionally I'll read some of those. Susie Bishop wants to know, why do you think that Philip Elizabeth relationship works so well, even though they do have big differences? I, I never really thought, well, to, uh, there's a number of reasons, I think. I think um, the fact that the two came up from a very early age through a system whereby they not, didn't necessarily know themselves or, you know, who they were as people or what they wanted to do. There's a sort of heavy indoctrination from a very early age. And they were thrust, you know, forced into this life, which they had no real choice about. Therefore, there's a bonding for the two of them that is so unique globally. You know, I'm not sure there's many couples around the world who can who can say they've been through the same as these two. Therefore, they, they come, although there are differences as to where they are now, they come from the same... Uh, not to put it too marginally, you know, they come obviously from the same place, and I mean that an incredibly complicated uh, and emotional background, not just the fact that they're both from the Soviet Union. This was set up, you know, like you said earlier, you know, with their country when they were young as a, as a work relationship. Do you think they love each other? I do. Uh, I certainly think there's a love there um, that, that has that has grown out of a number of different things 
you know, as bizarre as this relationship is, and I've, you know, I've never seen a relationship like it on television, that they've lived together and raised children together, and, and now we find them discovering sort of feelings for each other. Um, I think there can but be a, a, a love, given what they've gone through, what they'll go through, and, and, you know, what they've been through, you know, with their own family. Talk about a complicated relationship. How about Clark and Martha? Uh, that that to me is. Uh, you have so to sad. laugh just doing some of those scenes, right? I do, I do. Uh, the 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 more bizarre element to that is the fact that, um, you know, the, the KGB had this program, this legitimate program called the Secretary's Offensive, whereby after it happened successfully, you know, um, KGB agent married a kind of. Um, top level secretary, security, security cleared secretary. The KGB went, this is a great idea, this is what we should be doing, launch this program in, in order to gain intelligence. So uh, as much of as a, a, an ask that it is to the, um, to the audience to sort of say, you know, this is uh, maybe a stretch of the imagination, it's based on frightening, you know, accurate fact. And that's what you have to remember, I think, when you're playing those moments. That it's not as farcical as it is. It's not. Um, so it's sort of landing it in, in a place of truth that's the, the challenge. Yeah, I, I believe it because, you know, this particular woman, this particular character, probably has not gone on a lot of dates, has not had a lot of attention. Somebody suddenly starts paying attention to her. That's She's going to look beyond any red flags that might be going up. Absolutely, and and you know their their choice in targets was was very specific for those you know similar reasons you've just mentioned. Um, so the you know and I think ultimately Philip's a good guy. So with that comes a degree of guilt as to what he's you know the way he plays with a person's life and their feelings. My only my big fear here is whether it's the third season, fourth season, further down the road, this is just not going to end well for Martha. And they've armed her now, which uh, can only add fuel to the fire. Um, no, you know, you, it's one of the great things of the series, I think. There's a, there is a very strong, loud, ever-increasing in volume and tempo um, sort of metronome with this increasing beat to their lives that where they know it will not last. And, that, and that's part of the beautiful conflict between them is that I think Philip is very strongly aware that it's not a sustainable future. And, and with, the, with that, the consequences are enormous. Um, so in every aspect of the show, there's, um, there's a great feeling of this is going to end badly. The season ends with a big sort of a twist, and that is that they're already recruiting your daughter. Um, I, you know, and th that's right at the end, so we don't know truly, your, you know, the full reactions from Philip and Elizabeth. But I don't sense that much like the the teenage boy that we found out killed his parents, he was being recruited. You, you, I sense that this is going to be a big arc for next year. <clears throat> Enormous, uh, you know, and and sort of a beautifully beautifully dropped bombshell. The the dying seconds of the finale um, that have certainly uh, you know put the hooks in to me is a clear cliffhanger um, and sets up you know a fantastic. And another rocky path for the Jennings, you know, just after forging this unity in the, se in the second season, you know that there is a lot of trouble ahead. And, I, and I, you know, I think that's been very relevant for Phil throughout the season in that he desperately didn't want his daughter to follow a, 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 a web or a life of lies like he's had to lead. That's why he's been so vehement, I think, in his approach to her lies. So the thought that she would further... Um, spin that web into what would be a sort of Herculean <laughs> um, mess of, of um, deception. I think it, it terrifies him that his daughter will live the same life as he has to. Yeah, I told Carrie earlier this week one of my favorite scenes of the year was when you're actually, your character uh, has caught her in a lie and is telling her there's, there's no lying in this house. I just love that. Yeah, but, you know, it's bizarre, the, the number of people who've sort of said, oh, you huge hypocrite in saying that, <clears throat> but I think the moment is very specific and very unique, and, and, and it is, you know, a, a part of a strong parental adage of, you know, do as I say, not as I do, and, and that's his fear for her. He doesn't want her to live the life he's lived, which is why he's so um, puritanical 
in in that moment. Well, and speaking of that attitude, you're. We have an article today on our website of one of our other editors talking about how great your performance was this year and how the Emmys ought to recognize it. But he specifically was talking about the Marshall Eagle episode where you rip up the Bible and you're yelling at your daughter. And um, th there's a point uh, in this season where you go to visit the preacher, the pastor, and well, I felt I, I feared for his life too when you go walking in those church doors. What did you think about that particular episode and th for your character? Uh, I loved it any more, any time within this. You know, it was one of the things that drew me um, initially to the pilot. It wasn't the, the sort of central relationship at its core. Was I thought, how is that going to play out? And that was, you know, a great draw. But also, what I loved, although yes, we're in a world of espionage, um, we're not. You know, we don't do everything with um, a dry martini. Or you know, the, what I love is how fallible they are and how human they are. Where the gray areas lie and how they get things wrong and they're scared and it's not the competence that I, you know, that's usually executed in the more operational work but it's how, as I said, human and where their flaws lie that's the greater interest and I thought Marshall Eagle was a cracking point for Philip where you saw the accumulation of sort of two seasons beginning to take its toll on him, and he and he and his coping mechanism isn't working, and and I just thought it showed him in a in a very human light, or at times inhuman. A question from Chris Hadley. He wants to know for this. Um, would you say that the physical acting, the action sequences, were more difficult this year than the second than than the, the first season? No, I think I I always look forward. I always look forward to the physical moments because they seem like a welcome relief. You know, our, I think our show is so heavily laced with um, sort of emotional complexity. It can be a little bit wearing at times. So in the more physical moments, you, you kind of you come out of your head and, and into your body, and, and it kind of just reminds me of doing martial arts as a boy or, you know, playing sports. I, I, I enjoy those moments enormously. But isn't that one of the great parts about this kind of job for you? I mean, you and Carrie, I talked to her about this too, both, you know, you grew up as kids and you're out playing action, you're out playing spies and cops and robbers and all of that, and now you get to do it for money and, and, and for your career. It's true, but, all, but also the, 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 the other side of the Americans is, is that, yes, I do box tick a number of sort of boyhood fantasies in the role I'm playing and, and what he gets to do, but... Um, the other greater side of the seesaw is that it comes with this enormously gratifying emotional roller coaster that as an actor you you know the stake is put in front of you you're allowed to get your teeth into therefore you know you you get to do both it's it's both adult and uh, and an indulgence to childhood fantasy by the way when talking with her she never once referred by your first name what what do you think she called you throughout the interview probably the welshman she did. Is that what she refers to you all day long? It is. I'm, I'm surprised if she actually does know my first name. Yeah, I should start calling her the American, actually. That's right. That's right. By the way, the kids, uh, the actors playing your kids are so good. A lot of shows, I guess they get lucky sometimes in getting good kids, but some don't get lucky. But you've got, you've got two good ones. We did. You know, you've um, taken the words out of our mouth. We, we did get incredibly lucky um, with two very fabulously sensitive and nuanced little teenagers. It's, it's sort of fantastic. And, you know, they, they in those moments of um, certain fatigue when hysteria sets in with the adults, it's their professionalism that reminds us where the bar is at times. And I, I don't kid you about that. A uh, question from our uh, forums from Pepper. Uh, and I, I want to pursue this for another question too, but I'll ask this one first. Will you or Carrie ever have a scene with the uh, Nina character? I don't know. Uh, you know, this season was the first time I, that I actually got to um, uh, perform with Lev, um, you know, Arkady from from the Resident Tour. So we would, we joked a lot on set, like you know, it's it such a rare occasion. But I, I think there would there'd be there'd be something very fascinating. I think about those. Uh, those three especially meeting up and 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 you know it's one of the reasons I think there's a I don't know if this is healthy or not but there's codependency in Philip and Elizabeth that they're the only people who can truly understand what they do um, and Nina in a very different degree not very different but in a different degree and I and I think there would be great empathy within those three of 
or having a cup of tea, Russian tea, and, and sighing a sigh of relief and saying, oh my God, isn't it hard? Well, hopefully she'll be back as things were left at the end of the season. We don't know. Uh, no, I think she will be back, um, is my feeling. We'll ask her that next week. We've got her and Noah coming up next week. So Good. Uh, well, speaking of know. Noah and, 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 um, and Annette, I don't. Do you watch the show as a fan? Because you don't ever. It's like two different shows in a way. You've got the FBI show and you've got the uh, the the uh, your show. Uh, and I'm wondering uh, if you watch at least just to see what what else is going on. I watch this stuff. I, I I've I struggle slightly watching my stuff. Um, but yes, I, yes, I do. So that to that to me is like the focal point. To me personally, is the focal point of the show because that's the most. I'm devoid divorced of it, and and you know. It's sort of very gripping. The Nina Stan stuff I find incredibly gripping. Um, so, yeah, to me, that's the show. Well, you know at some point, again, whether it's third season, fourth season, somewhere down the road, you and Stan, are, he's going to figure out what's going on, and you're going to have to tangle. That's going to be like a whole season of you tangling with Stan. But that's the other, you know, that's the other beauty of it. You know, you know there's an inevitability to, to so many aspects of the show that will probably not end very well. However, the thought of how they end you know, dramatically, is uh, is incredibly interesting. It's okay to know something's going to happen, but we don't have to know the whys or the hows. That's that's up to those creative writers. It is, and and we certainly don't. They they're about to get. I think they go in July. They go into the darkened room, and figure out what uh, what's in store. We've got a question from Lily Poppy. She's in France. Says hello from France. Bonjour. I'm on my way to France. Oh, oh, good. Uh, what role or play would you dream to perform on stage? I hate to say it because I've been lucky. I, two years ago, I played Jimmy Porter from Look Back in Anger, um, which bizarrely got me. The, I was doing it off-Broadway in New York, and it got me the part in The Americans, the producers and creator and casting director came to see the show. Um, and that was an enormous part that I always wanted to play. I, I am loath to say it, but it is true, and I'm sorry to say it, and it's a real cliche, but Hamlet is um, is the elusive part for me that I would love to play. You On PBS just a couple of years ago, it was sort of like a play. The Edwin Drood movie that you did was so good. Yes, yeah, you know, another... A very lucky opportunity to sort of box tick a, um, a Dickens, you know, a BBC adaptation of a Dickens that they do so well, um, and and the the darkness that Dickens can serve up, um, again, for an actor is a real dream to, of of substance to get your uh, to get your teeth into. There's very little you have to do; you just have to kind of show up and say the words. Also, from Chris Hadley, uh, we talked about drama series right now on TV. What kinds of shows do you like to watch? What what um, what what catches your attention these days? Um, predominantly documentaries. I think maybe I'm, I'm at that point now where you sort of when you when you work in drama, you kind of you look at it for all the wrong reasons. Um, so I, I'm a big sort of user of net, um, the Netflix documentary department, and that's what I tend to smash quite heavily. Yeah, I love documentaries, too. I interviewed the man that did the new documentary for History Channel, World Wars. Have you seen that yet? I, I've been watching a part. Um, yes, I have been watching parts of that. Um, love because, that. And, and I, yeah. so many things that I didn't know. I know. The, the reason I'm kind of dipping into that is because I'm going to France to do a World War II movie this summer. Wonderful. Well, um, one question about your past. I, we haven't discussed it before, and that's Brothers and Sisters. Um, that really puts you on the map, especially here in America. When you think back to just being cast on that show, wonderful ensemble, what, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you think about that show? How thankful and grateful I am because in every, in every aspect, not just to be on an American show, but you know, a great show with great writing and an incredible cast that I learned so much. It was an, an enormous learning, learning curve for me, that show, in every sense, um, just from a craft point of view, um, a discipline point of view, a work ethic point of view, um, and the opportunities it presented. I was incredibly lucky to direct um, a few of them. It, it was just all over uh, um, an incredible learning curve for me, for which I'll, I'll forever be indebted. Directing, is that something you would like to do on The Americans? 
I would love to. I doubt very much it would be possible. The brothers and sisters were so incredibly good to me uh, in that in the um, prep week running up to the uh, directing week that I would do, they would write me light. In the directing episode, they would write me light. Um, so two weeks, two episodes, I'd be written relatively light so I could prep and direct. Um, I do, the workload on, on the Americans is a little too excessive, um, I think, to, to, to warrant a week of preparation. And, we, and a, to trying to direct the, the, at the pace at which we shoot as well, I think, would be slightly horrific. I remember John Hamm talking to an interviewer about that a couple of years ago. He's directed, I think, two different seasons, but he specifically, he said he wanted to do it, but he specifically requested that it be either the first or second episode of the season, strictly because of the prep work. Yes, that, I mean, that's one of the harder elements of it, is um, obviously, you, you, you know, you're shooting several hours uh, every day, so um, trying to location scout or, car, you know, cast other cast members or everything. Props meetings, costume meetings, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a lot of time. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time today. And if you get in that Emmy nomination pool this summer, uh, we hope you'll think about Marshall Eagle as your episode to submit to the Emmy judges. I will certainly. Thank you very much. Have a great summer. Thank you.